Hello, I am Dan from Architects. I play the drums because when I was a young man, I thought it would be a cool instrument to play. And I did not realize that I would end up playing it into my 30s. Uh, but here I am, and uh, yeah, it's, I, I, still, I still love it, and I just, uh, I, you know what? One of the nicest things about drums is that I get like a hell, I get like a chance to, oh, this sounds so corny, but it's like a nice chance to hit stuff in a non-violent way, you know? So it's like a nice chance for me to get some frustration out sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's my sort of relationship with it is always changing and evolving, but uh, yeah, I, I, I still love playing the drums for sure. It's a good question. Um, my main influence is with drumming is, is a difficult question to answer because I feel like, you know, when, when I, when I first started playing in a band, my my heroes were like uh, Danny Carey from Tool and Abe Cunningham from Deftones, Chris Penny when he was in the Dillinger Escape Plan, um, and then it, I guess it kind of that sort of created the, the sort of foundation of the kind of drummer I am. Um, it seems absurd to suggest that I'm anything like those three, but um, yeah, I, I, I since then it's kind of not really changed. I, there's not really there. Are, I, obviously, there's loads of great new drummers all the time um, that I see. But yeah, I, I, do you know what? I, I don't spend an awful time watching other drummers. It's probably a really bad thing as a drummer to say when you've got YouTube now with an infinite resource of amazing talented drummers all over the world. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like those three still are the most important to me in terms of what has influenced my style and the way I approach drumming. But um, these days, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think of it that in that in that way really. I kind of just uh, just search for whatever I think is going to sound coolest with, with the music we're writing, and uh, I try and I actually try. Yeah, I'm probably going to get some flack for this, but sometimes I try and dial it back a little bit these days. Uh, just to like not make it too busy. Um, I feel like in heavy music, especially you know we're a fairly technical band and always have had that element about us. Um, but between all like the guitars and, and the vocals, they're already taking up so much space and in, in the song that sometimes I try and just like pull it back. And, be background because sometimes drums have to be background <clears throat> unfortunately. <laughs> oh live studio is miserable. Yeah I hate record I hate I, I love recording records. I like making records but the humiliating process of hearing exactly how bad you are at the drums is both humbling and depressing. Um, so yeah I mean I love seeing it a record come together and it's always exciting when that time comes around but yeah I definitely sort of get in the studio and walk away from it thinking you need to try harder next time uh, but yeah playing live is playing live is fun because it, you know it's not about playing the song perfect it's about just you know I beat myself up a little bit when I if I uh, you know underperform in my eyes but uh, if I'm not perfect, that's fine, you know. It's just human beings playing songs and it's it's, it's more about just uh, sharing that moment with the people that have come to see you, sharing like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, taking out some of that frustration and sharing that kind of um, mutual feeling with the crowd, you know. I feel like that's what heavy music is good for. And uh, so yeah, it's sort of a moment to step out of your head if you can um, and just, just yeah enjoy playing the songs and and I'm not gonna say get lost in the music because uh, that would be horrendous but definitely you know just like enjoying enjoying the song for what it is and and and, and trying not to worry about anything else that might be going on in your life or even with the other guys on stage, just try and sometimes I just try and be in my own little bubble and enjoy playing those songs. So. 
I will. I have been thinking about a new kit, but I'm going to wait and see what the album artwork is on our next record and see how the kit can maybe um, sort of complement the aesthetic of the record. I'm not necessarily talking about wrapping it with you know the album artwork but it's something color wise that, that makes sense with the artwork so we'll see but yeah that is something that's, that's on the cards i would say get a back rest or make sure you have a strong core before you start touring and doing those long sets because that's messed up my back back rest helps just in between songs just giving it being able to relax um i just try and do a solid warm up, but like these days I, I do a less regimented warm up. You know, especially now I have this kit. Um, it can be more. I can just play through some of the songs, or it can just be. I can just be sort of jamming on it and just improvising and, and not worrying about too much about um, doing the same thing. I, I, which is there's nothing wrong with doing it the other way. But I feel like for me now I have this kit. It, it's nice just to play drums, uh, and then when I get on stage I feel sort of nicely acquainted with, with the kit, if you know what I mean, as opposed to just the, the snare. So, yeah, I, I mean, I try, I tr do my best, I, I do overthink stuff, but I do my best to try and not overthink stuff, um, because, I, yeah, once you get in your head, that's when you start causing yourself problems, you know? So, yeah, I just try and relax and be as, uh, yeah, be as relaxed as I can, and, and sometimes that can be difficult if it's a big show that's, you know, there's lots of anticipation for, you know, it's a show that's a bit bigger than we, we might be used to playing. Um, sometimes you can get a bit caught up in that, I try my best not to. Um, so, those shows especially, I might have a, a beer to try and just loosen me up. Um, but yeah, just I just, just try and not get caught too caught up in everything else and just focus on my job, you know, and especially if it's a big show and, I'm, and I feel a little bit, uh, and I do get caught up in it, I kind of just try and slow myself down and just deal with the drums, not worry about any of the other stuff and, and uh, yeah, if I screw up, I try not to walk off stage, and, yeah. I, if I, if I get some of this wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. I have, there's, there's videos on the internet of me walking through my kit years ago at home and I didn't know everything about it and people are criticising me for it. Uh, I'm like the least like nerdy drummer I guess you could say, like in terms of the specs and everything. I'm terrible for it but I have, uh, I want to say a walnut finish. Uh, SJC kit, obviously. Uh, it's a 22 and a 12, 16, and 18. Don't worry about the depths. Um, and I've actually been using a snare drum that you guys made me for the last year, which is a sort of commemorative, uh, commemorative snare drum for my brother. The specs of it, I don't know. It's a very thick wooden shell with like this metal thing in the middle, which is probably not the exact name for it um, but yeah I've been using that kit in the States for probably three or four years now um, so I should probably get you to make, make me another one or something I don't know I should do that um, <laughs> but yeah it's, it's been great and like uh, my drum tech loves it and and, uh, our, and even more importantly our, our sound guy loves it as well so yeah it's been it's been a very uh, reliable and trusted my advice for aspiring musicians would be to, I would say, it's a tough one, I, th I think aspiring musicians need to focus on the songs intensely and have a clear idea, it doesn't even have to be a clear sound but like the feeling that you want to get from it don't settle until you got it um, and you, you, you that might mean that you have to work so hard that you feel like you're going crazy stop before you start feeling like you're going crazy and then and then come back and I, I feel like sometimes 
bands can write songs just as a means to an end, whether that means like touring or finances or, or whatever, but it's, it should be more than that, you know, the, the, it's, all, it, it's actually all about the songs, you know, and, and that's what connects with people, that's what other people in, invest in, and sometimes I think that musicians these days can, can lose sight of that because you know maybe that maybe they maybe it's they lost their way a bit or maybe it's just like a cultural thing you know the sort of artistic side of it getting lost amongst the the capitalist side of it which is fine that's, that is a part of it but i think that actually more focus and time and care needs to be given to the to the songs whatever type of music you're doing and if it sounds like another band or your peers, change it. Do something different, be your own band. If you sound like everyone else, eventually that well runs dry and, and people lose interest. You know, you've got to be your own thing and, and be genuine and authentic and, um, and, and write about something real. Write about something that you, that you care about genuinely, not just something that you think people might want to hear or something, you know, it's got to be real, so that would be my advice.